Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring Rebecca, a very, very spicy deck profile. Hope you guys are ready for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to dive into it. Went to a locals recently, and generally my locals consist anywhere between 30 to 40 people on a given Sunday. Just regular locals. Yeah, we're very competitive in this area. There, there are a lot of very, very skilled players. There's a lot of players in my locals who go out to regionals out here in our way, which is really, really cool. But there's always a lot of people. We ended up going three and two, which we lost two games. And we'll get into which ones we did lose and why we lost those matches. But other than that, we're going to talk about our deck list for Rebecca. And this is considering the brand new changes to Zoro, the brand new changes to Red in general with the Law as well. So in other words, the Dedan, the Nami, the Whitebeard nerf, the Marco restriction, and all that sort of thing. But either way, the star of the, the star of this deck, of course, is Rebecca. And if you guys are interested in a playmat like this, which is phenomenal, by the way, hit me up in the comments down there and I'll let you know where to get one. One of my graphic designers created this for me and it's phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. But in any case, we start off this game with Rebecca. And if you don't know what she does, she allows you to pay one and cycle two cards on top of your deck. You can pitch whatever card you don't want, but generally you can only keep one Dress Rosa card. The other card goes into the trash. You can do this every single turn as long as you have six cards or less in your hand, which is really, really good. On top of that, we'll start off with our 2Ks, and we're taking four Barts, okay? Now, what this guy allows you to do is he's a 2K counter, and he's a blocker in the same situation, which is really, really good. So you can play for a 2K, you can play him for a blocker. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter, but I've noticed that with this new meta, I've been opting to rather play him as a blocker because it allows you to protect yourself more so than waste your 2Ks on something you don't want to generally throw a 2K out for, if that makes sense. But he works in both ways, right? And then we're taking two, four Gats. I don't know why I said two, but we're taking four Gats. Gats is generally just a 2K. We're not pitching him on the field. We're not using him in any other scenario. It's generally just a 2K. And then we're running two Tashigis. I opt to do two because my list is a little bit spicy and we'll get into what I decide to do here, which is something you probably don't see in normal Rebecca lists. Now, sometimes I will run four and I've seen some lists run either for Rebecca, for um, Tuzru, I'm pretty sure I butchered her name, I'm sorry, and or for Mihawks. And some decks also like running Kaya. I opt to do Tashigi because she also can step in as a blocker. As soon as she hits that board, if you're able to activate her main, which you tap it, and you can rest this unit, and you can give up to one of your opponent's units minus two cost, she kind of situates as a blocker, because your opponent will try to get rid of her. You know what I mean? They'll attack into it, which is cool. For our one drops, we run four Rebecca's. No more, no less. Card staple for what it does. Essentially, it is your leader. It is your leader effect, but better. The leader allows you to look at two. Rebecca allows you to look at three. So in other words, you can activate your leader effect to draw into a Rebecca, to play a Rebecca, to draw into another card. So in other words, how many cards did you just get to look at? Five in a single turn, which is really, really good. Now, Rebecca, can, this Rebecca cannot draw into another Rebecca, but you can draw into another card, which is really, really solid. And we take two Leos. I'm opting to take out Leo entirely. I don't feel I need Leo as much as I did beforehand, and I really didn't see him a whole lot get a lot of use. And I'll, like I said, we'll get into why. And considering the metagame is different now, well, it will be on Friday, right? November 10th, considering the restrictions go live then. You won't run into a lot of Namis. So again, red won't be as dominant as it once was. So Leo will also lose a little bit of pressure. But Leo allows you to, as soon as this card hits the field, to pop any one drop on your opponent's side of the field, one or less, excuse me, and then rest your leader and discard some cards on top of your deck. Really, really good. But... With this new restriction, we won't see him as much. We won't need him. And now we're going to be running four Adeos. Adeos are your two-drop blocker, which I think is essential for Rebecca. It gives your Alumbus another target, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I do think blockers are going to be really, really good in this metagame right now. Again, you're going to be running into crocodiles. You're going to be running into queens. They generally have a lot of blockers, right? And they will be playing cards to remove your stuff on your board and all that sort of thing. This is a cheap blocker, which you can protect yourself a, a little bit with, which is really, really solid. And on top of that, you still have to deal with Katakuri, and you will be running into Zoro as well, because Zoro is still very, very strong, especially Whitebeard variant. 
But other than that, I think a Deo is staple for this list. We're going to be taking up four Kiros. Kiros is a card in which you cannot sub out. You cannot drop down from three. You cannot run two. You have to run four Kiros in this build. Especially considering what Kiros does. Kiros has three lives. Okay? Listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. This card has three lives. All right? As long as you have Colosseum and Rebecca in play, which you always have Rebecca because it is your leader. But if you have Colosseum as well, Kiros cannot be destroyed by battle. He cannot be destroyed by gum gum jet pistols. He cannot be destroyed by thunderbolts. You have to remove this card solely with cards with bounce effects. I.e. like Soka King. Okay. Zeph. Kaido. 3000 worlds. Cards that allow you to bounce cards back to the hand or the bottom of the deck. That's the only way Kiros can be removed. Other than that, you have to attack into this unit more than three times in a turn to kill it. Because as soon as he's destroyed, quote unquote, you can tap your leader. You can tap your Colosseum to make sure he's immune, which is really, really cool. Also, when Kiros hits the board, he destroys any one dropper lower. All right, which is very, very strong, right? In this metagame. And then we're running for Alumbus. Alumbus is another card like Kiros, is very, very staple to the deck. Alumbus allows you to activate once per turn, during your turn only, minus four cost of anything on your opponent's side of the field. But in doing so, you have to destroy one of your own units. And most of the time, you opt to destroy Kiros and then tap Rebecca or Coliseum. That way, he's safe, right? Now, when you do that, you minus four to whatever you want on your opponent's side of the field, which is really, really good. So in other words, if you play Alumbus first or already have an Alumbus before you drop a Kiros on board, you can pop Rebecca or you can get rid of a Deo, you can get rid of a Leo in that situation. And then you can play a Kiros down and kill whatever you decide to minus four of, which is really strong, right? At the end of the day. Alumbus is a card in which does leave the field a lot, okay? Because your opponent will opt to kill it as soon as it hits the board. And if they don't have an answer for it, they're looking for an answer, trust me. But you want to try to get this out as early as you possibly can. It's so like on curve is probably your best bet, in my opinion, at least for me right now. And for our five drops, we're running Sabo. Sabo is another... Staple card, of course. Now you can, I've seen some lists run three. I've seen some lists run two. I don't know why you would. I think you need to run four because of what Sabo does for you. He allows you to cycle more cards on top of your deck, draw cards, and then pitch cards, which is really, really good. And then he allows for all of your cards to gain immunity on your field. In other words, they can't be destroyed, just like Kiros. The only way that they can be removed is by bounce effects, your red rocks and all that sort of thing. But Sabo is also a 6k body as a blocker, which is really, really good. And then for your sevens, which we only run for Monkey D. Luffy's. And I think by now everyone knows what Luffy does. And I think running any less than, than four, you're probably going to hurt yourself a lot more because you might see those cards in life. You might get them thrown in the trash in the early game. You want to run four Luffy's. You need to see him at least once or twice a game at the very least to actually close out a game most of the time. Now, when it comes to Luffy, when it comes to these events, you run two King Kong guns. You can run three, but I think two is an optimal number. Three is pretty good too, but I always see King Kong gun regardless of two or three. And it's hard for me to cut other cards and screw my list. Now with Kong gun, as long as you guys have 15 cards in the trash, whatever card you activate Kong gun on has to be Dress Rosa. When it is, they gain 6,000 power automatically, right? And then if you have 15 or more in your trash, they also gain double attack. Which is good, because you can put this on anything and close out a game or get rid of a unit on your opponent's side of the field. I put this on Rebecca earlier, the one drop, and we got rid of cards on the opponent's side of the field. We also closed out a game with it, which is really good, because it's unexpected. But hey, eat the run. Other than that, we're taking three Coliseums, which I think is going to be staple. No less. You don't really need to run four. You want to see this game, or sorry, see this card at least once a game. You have to see it, really, to be honest to make sure you hit your curve, make sure you are doing really well. You want to see this card. So I like to try to at least get it in my opening hand. If I don't, I want to get a C of Rebecca in my opening hand. That way on turn one, or turn two, excuse me, depending on what turn you go on, you can play Rebecca and activate your Be leader effect to at least hopefully draw into a Coliseum. And then we're taking four Bastardos. Now you could run 3,000 Worlds. And I know 3,000 worlds is really, really good. But I want to be able to hit this card. 
off my Rebecca leader effect or Rebecca in general. I don't want to pitch 3,000 worlds. I want to make sure I'm able to get something that I can get value with. This card in general kills pretty much almost everything in the metagame you're going to be playing against. Especially, it does it really, really well. At the same time, you have 15 or more cards in your trash, you're hitting 6 cost units on your opponent's side of the field, and just destroying those immediately, which is really, really good. Now, this card also enables you to kill Big Moms, your 8 drops, your Katakuris, or sorry, your 7 drop Big Moms, your 8 drop Katakuris. It allows you to kill Big Mom as well. Because with the Lumbus, minus is 4 to Big Mom, then you drop a Bastardo, that's it, it's over, she's gone. Easy peasy, right? So easy to do that. Whereas with 3,000 worlds, the odds of you getting that are a little bit a little bit harder, a little bit slim, considering that you generally will trash that with your Rebecca Leader effect unless you have it in your opening hand or draw into it. And we're taking three Red Rocks. Now, again, you can take 3,000 worlds. But in the very, very beginning when Rebecca first came out and I was doing all the playtesting and all that sort of thing, I was a little bit naive because I felt that I will always have an Alumbus on the field. That way, Alumbus can minus four cost, and then I can activate 3,000 worlds to remove whatever I wanted, right? Well, in a perfect world, that's awesome. But in this card game, it's not going to happen. Because as soon as Alumbus hits that board, he's going to get deleted, right? So you're not going to be able to play that effect every single time. It's not going to happen. So you need something that's a little bit more reliable, and Red Rock is that card. It does that for you, it removes whatever you want, and you go about your day. Now, when it comes to Spice, for this list, I run a lot of different things. I've tried a lot of different variants. Now, we're missing four of the cards of this deck. And bear with me, because we're going to get into them. We run four Ice Ages. Don't sleep on it. Give it a shot before you sit here and be like, oh, wow, that card sucks. No. This card is very, very, very good in Rebecca. And it doesn't really need that much explanation. You pop an Ice Age, right? You pop a Kuros afterwards. You delete whatever you want. You pop an Alumbus, then you pop an Ice Age, you delete whatever you want. Ice Age on Leo, you delete almost whatever you want. It, it does so much work. And then you have on top of that, Bastardo with Ice Age. You see the synergy here? There's a lot of synergy with Ice Age. It does so much work with Rebecca. On top of that, it is a very, very strong trigger. So in other words, you have four opportunities of getting Bastardo on your trigger, or Ice Age on your trigger, which allows you to remove cards on top of your opponent's field, which is really, really good. Now, we've done, this is my current Rebecca list, and this is what's been working for me right now. This is it. I'll let you guys, you know, leave your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section. Please, I'd love to hear it. For substitutes, for other cards that you can also think about, Garp. Garp does some, some different scenarios at the end of the day, but he's still a non-dress Rosa card. And if you do include them into the list, I would only include two. I've done playtesting with pretty much anything you think about when it comes to Rebecca. Now, when it comes to Garp, I think Garp is actually really, really good because it allows you to get rid of cards in your hands to make sure you always have six cards or less for your leader effect, which is really solid. Again, you play Garp, you have Lumus on the field. They're going to kill one or the other. Most of the time, it'll be Garp in that scenario because you can pop something for free for him. But you minus four costs, you play your Garp. Cool. You're getting rid of Katakuri. That simple. Then you have Borslino. I've seen a couple of Rebecca lists that run this card. I think he's pretty good. But in this metagame, I don't think Borslino really matters. Because you're playing against so many different bounce effects. Again, Red Rock. Right? Thousand Worlds. Okay? Soga King. Alright? Kaido. Borslino really loses a lot of effect. Let's be honest. If you're not running against a lot of um, Law players. A lot of Zoro players. But I do think Zoro's still going to be really, really relevant. But you're not seeing a lot of jet pistols. The only time that that really matters is when you play into one, when you're attacking, a jet pistol goes off or a thunderbolt goes off. Other than that, he's getting removed. That's just the way it is. Now we also can opt in to run Dofi. I've tried running Dofi. I think Dofi is really, really good. He's pretty consistent in this build, but you have to get rid of Adeo to do it. But Dofi allows you to, you know, stack your deck in a sense where you're always hitting something with Rebecca, which is really good. And then you can also go Cavendish. Now, Cavendish has a lot of scenarios that are really, really good for him. I.e., Ice Age Cavendish. You're killing whatever. You already have Lumbus on the board. Okay, you got Coliseum. All right, you drop a Cavendish on the board. Guess what? You're killing whatever you want with an Ice Age at the end of the day, which is really, really strong. And then, other than that, you have your Thousand Worlds and your Hyruden, 
which is also really, really strong. But at the end of the day, I don't have a lot of space to consider running this guy. He does really, really well, but I'd rather run a Garp over him most of the time. That's just me. And your last your last card that can be considered would be your Kuzan. And I don't think Kuzan is very optimal for Rebecca. I personally don't. I think having that 10 cost is just a little too much. I'd rather just drop a Luffy in a, in a Kong gun and go to town instead of just dropping a Kuzan and bouncing my turn back. You know what I mean? But overall, we ended up going 3-2. We played against Azoro and a Whitebeard in the beginning, which Whitebeard is generally no problem for me. I don't know if you guys struggle with Whitebeard. I think Whitebeard is one of the easier matchups, but Whitebeard, Zoro, we lost against um, Crocodile, Blue Crocodile, and Blue Crocodile back to back. We lost both games. The first time we ran into Crocodile, I just I wanted the scoop because I'd much rather play against uh, Katakuri than I would play against Crocodile. I got Kaido twice back to back. You know what I mean? One turn after the other, which sucked. Now, don't get me wrong. We had a Lumbus on the board, okay? And he dropped. He would drop the Kaido and bounce back the Lumbus. Well, now what? On my turn, I'd play down a Lumbus, then I would activate Bastardo to get rid of the Kaido. On the following turn, he did the exact same thing again, which, no be announced to him, he's a very, very good blue player. He's a very good player in general. We have a lot of good players up here at our locals. I just think Kaido... Or not sorry, not Kaido, but Blue Crocodile is very, very hard for Rebecca to deal with. Same thing with Queen, but Blue Crocodile more so. You know what I mean? Um, our last match was a purple-yellow Crocodile, which um, I kind of felt bad, to be fair, because I ended up red rocking back-to-back -back Yamato and a Crocodile, and then I had red rock again. You know what I mean? So it just, mm, it didn't sit right with me. It was not that much of a difficult match at all. For me, so we ended up going three and two. But overall, hopefully you guys give this list a shot. Let me know what you think about it. I will catch you guys in the very next video. Stay safe out there. I'll see y'all later.